We've developed some new fighting techniques for the Catapult Commander, and with your permission, we'd like to proceed to field tests. If these new tactics work, it just might make the Catapult one of the most underrated mechs in all the Inner Sphere. Let's go over the Catapult stats in Battletech Classic, and how to use it to its maximum potential. After that, I'll show you an experimental design so our pilots can push beyond the limits of the original. Production Year 2561 Star League Era Age of War Subera Name Catapult CPLT C1 Weight 65 tons Faction Capellan Confederation House Liao Role Missile Boat Built before the formation of the Star League itself, the original Catapult is armed with two Holly LRM 15 launchers and four Martel medium lasers. It's jump capable with a set of Anderson Propulsion 21 jump jets, although they tend to bust open after a while and vent heat back into the mech. We should try and get our hands on the updated Anderson 25 jets if we can. Availability wise, the catapult is typically not for purchase. We'll have to acquire one through salvage or less official channels. It's most common in the Draconis Combine and Compelling Confederation, making up 1 in 5% of their heavy mechs respectively. The Combine having captured a number of them on Darien, and the Capellans having controlled the catapult's only factory in Cori which was later bombed at the start of the First Secession War. The mech is now out of production, and there are fewer and fewer of this once widely distributed design each year. Offensively, the Catapult is very good. It can fight at both long range with its LRMs and at short range with its medium lasers. It just needs to remember to stay out of melee range because of its lack of arms. Its flaw is that it's light on ammunition and it has too many heat sinks. While keeping cold might be nice for the pilot, from an efficiency standpoint, this is not ideal. It means the tonnage is being wasted, and the heat sinks that sit idle could have been used for something else. Defensively, the catapult's 10 tons of armor is a bit low, but acceptable for its role. The ammunition locations are padded well enough, but its expensive LRM launches are not very well protected and become prone to damage if the armor is ever breached. Mobility-wise, the catapult is fantastic for a heavy mech. The Star League often use these mechs in their specialist mountaineering regiments. Its 646 speed helps the catapult get into a firing position faster than other missile boats and makes it an exceptionally good city fighter. Taking all these characteristics into account, Commander, leads me to believe it's possible for us to pioneer a new fighting style for the catapult. While many mercenary units would be hesitant to do this because of the rarity of the machine, I believe when used to its maximum potential, the catapult is not a dedicated missile boat, but is a mech that roll swaps between the missile boat and skirmisher positions. Its fighting style should be less like the Archer and Longbow, and more similar to how a Dervish fights. When thinking about lance compositions, the Catapult needs a bit of support. It has no piercing weapon, so its lance mates need to make up for this. It also requires a well-armored brawler like a Black Knight to play in front of it, and a bodyguard like a Vindicator to fight with it against flankers. For a balanced lance composition, a Hunchback can be added to form a solid front line for the Catapult to fight around. The jump jets on the Catapult also make it a good addition to a raiding lance that needs to remain mobile, like the one shown here. While I have yet to analyze all the heavy mechs available to us, Commander, I feel I can rate the Catapult as an A-tier mech as an initial grade. Its ability to fight in any terrain and at all range brackets means it can perform in nearly any mission we need it to. Of the variants available to us, the most notable is the K-2, used by the Draconis Combine. It's an underappreciated variant that has similar performance to the Warhammer and Marauder at PPC range. I think the mech techs and I have created a design that's even better than that though, but first, let me show you how to get more out of the original design with this new set of tactics. This new fighting technique, above all else, requires the catapult pilot to shift their mindset. Pilots should no longer think about themselves as backline artillery pieces, but more like boxers with a reach and speed advantage. Pilots shouldn't shy away from the fight, but instead make aggressive use of angles to create favorable trades. As mechs are entering the battlefield, the catapult can activate early in the initiative. It should move to a central position with cover and preferably elevation where it can threaten a wide area with its LRMs. As the battle opens at long range, the catapult should shoot its LRMs when it has a decent chance to hit. Since the catapult's ammunition is limited, my recommendation is to not shoot unless there's at least a 16% chance of hitting. Pilots may want to make a different decision based on the situation as damage done early is better than damage done later in the battle. As its targets close to medium range, pilots should use their speed and range advantage to attack their primary target while avoiding the attacks of heavier mechs. In this example, the catapult pilot slides to the left, slipping the punches of a double PPC armed Warhammer. It can still attack its primary target, the Centurion, at a plus two range modifier, but both enemy mechs' primary weapons have to shoot back with an inaccurate plus four. Against mechs like the Centurion, whose primary weapon is the AC-10 or large laser, the range advantage is very easy to exploit. The catapult maneuvers into 11 to 14 hex range and trades where its shots will land often, but its opponents will miss. 
against PPC armed mechs, the concept is the same, but the gap is smaller. The pilot should maneuver to 13 and 14 hexes to create a range advantage for itself. While tempting, fighting at 19 to 21 hexes, where the catapult can't get hit at all, is not recommended because of the reduced accuracy. As the battle progresses, the catapult may attract attention from strikers or skirmishers. In these cases, the catapult shouldn't panic, but instead call its friendly skirmishers or bodyguard mech before role swapping to a skirmisher itself. As a skirmisher, the catapult will often be one of the most heavily armed mechs in the fight. It should therefore be activated later in the initiative so it can get its weapons in their sweet spot while avoiding retaliation. The catapult again uses its range and mobility to hit its enemies from outside their effective range. The best distances to fight at are at 7 hexes if it wants to play more defensively, or 6 hexes if it wants to start laying on the damage, but it has a large number of hex ranges that will generate decent trades. Heat management wise, unless against a very lightly armed opponent, the pilot should keep their heat below 4 in order to maintain their mobility, and then look to push their heat higher if it catches their opponent out of position. By the way commander, if you'd like to add me to your mercenary company's advisory staff, all you have to do is click subscribe and the bell icon on the video below. Now let's go over to the mech bay and I'll show you a simple refit that makes this mech much more suitable for us mercenaries. We're designating this experimental catapult CPLT Slime X1 and naming it Battle Bunny. This change is intended to improve the catapult's endurance. We're swapping the two heat sinks for two tons of armor and trading a medium laser for a ton of ammunition. The refit is cheap, costing 50,000 C bills or less than 1% of the catapult's total cost. It's a two-day Class B field refit, meaning we can get it done without any specialized facilities. We just need a crane and our standardized tools. The Battle Bunny performs the same role as the original, but its expensive LRM-15 launchers are much better protected. The extra ton of ammunition also means the mech is much less likely to run out of steam at a critical moment. Pilots will need to learn to run instead of rely on their jump jets quite as much during skirmishes, but simulations suggest this should not significantly impact performance. Yeah, we win.